Hello and welcome to the second video in our tutorial on Learn Python for Beginners, offered by the T&O Synergic Metaverse. In this video, we are going to dive into the foundational concepts you need to understand before starting your Python programming journey. By the end of this video, you will have a solid grasp of key concepts that will make learning Python programming a lot smoother. So, kindly watch this video till the end. Without much ado, let's dive right in. More importantly, if you have not subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button now to keep updated with our latest videos. The TNO Synergic Metaverse, where imagination meets discovery. Python is a high level, interpreted programming language known for its simplicity and readability. It is widely used in various fields like web development, data analysis, artificial intelligence, and its syntax is designed to be intuitive, making it an excellent choice for beginners. Let's start by learning about tokens. Like any other programming language, Python programs are made of tokens. Tokens are the fundamental building blocks of a program. In Python, we have five types of tokens. The first one among them is a keyword. Keywords are the words that convey a special meaning to the Python interpreter. They are reserved for special purposes and cannot be used as normal identifier names. Words like print, class, for, range, etc. are some of the keywords in Python. As we progress through this course, you will come across all the keywords used in Python. The second one is an identifier. Identifiers are the names given to different parts of a program, like variable names, function names, array names, etc. Identifiers are created by the users by following a set of rules. The third one among them is literals, which are the data items that have fixed data values. In other words, all constants, both numerical and alphabetical, fall under the category of literals. For example, the integer 1, the decimal 10.23. The letter A and the word hello are the various types of literals in Python. The fourth one among them is separators. They are the punctuation marks used to separate things. For instance, a full stop, a comma, a colon, square brackets, simple brackets, etc. The fifth and final one among them are operators. They are the special signs or symbols that cause an action to be performed. Towards the end of this video, we will delve deeper into some of the most commonly used operators in Python and discuss them in detail. Now, we move on to the second fundamental pillar of Python program. The data types in Python. What are data types? Well, they are the means for the interpreter to identify the type of data to decide on the associated operations for handling them. For example, the plus operator used with two numbers will result in their sum, whereas the same plus operator used with two strings will join the strings. This process is known as concatenation and will be dealt with in our future video on strings. In this video, we will be dealing with the eight most commonly used data types, which are as follows. An integer. Like in mathematics, both positive and negative numerical quantities without a fractional part come under integers. For example, 1 and 23 as shown here. A floating point data type. Both positive and negative decimals are referred to as a floating point data type or a float in short. For example, 23.98 and 1.6. A string. Any combination of one or more characters, including a blank space, is treated as a string in Python. Unlike the previously mentioned numerical data types, a string cannot be written as such. Python mandates that a string must be enclosed within single quotation or double quotation marks. In the examples below, note how the earlier mentioned numerical examples became a string after they were enclosed in quotation marks. A list. As the name suggests, they are a set of values defined within square brackets and separated by commas in between. Python lets you create lists that can hold any value of any data type, as shown in the second example where a list is made by mixing a string, an integer and a float. A tuple, they are similar to lists, but the only difference is that they are immutable or cannot be changed. In a list, we can replace and delete the values by using special functions defined for those purposes, but it is not possible in the case of tuple. Note that a tuple is defined within simple brackets, not within square brackets, a dictionary. Unlike lists and tuples, which are indexed by position, dictionaries use keys to access elements, making them incredibly versatile for organizing and retrieving data. A Boolean data type. They are just true or false values. Note that the words true and false are keywords in Python. 
there is another data type which we do not see frequently, and it is the null data type. It is denoted by the keyword none and is used in rare cases where we want the program to return a blank value. Now that we have had a good understanding of the various data types used in Python, we move to another important constituent of a Python program, the variables. Variables in Python are named memory locations that store values of specific data types, similar to mathematics. When we write x equals 2 in Python, it signifies that the value 2 is assigned to the variable named x, meaning that a memory location is allocated and labeled as x containing the value 2. The slide on the screen shows the syntax of assigning a value to a variable, and towards the bottom, three examples of variable initialization are provided. Pause the video if needed and read through it to get a clear idea of how a variable initialization should be done. In the world of Python programming, functions serve as workhorses, executing sets of commands to accomplish particular tasks. Think of them as skilled craftsmen who receive instructions, carry out their work, and deliver results. A function is defined by a function name immediately followed by a pair of simple brackets. Note that there is no space between the last letter of the function name and the left simple bracket. There are two types of functions in Python. They are built-in functions and user-defined functions. Built-in functions are defined by the creators of Python and they employ keywords. For example, the print function is used to display output on the monitor. Here the word print is designated as a keyword and hence we cannot use it for any other purpose. User-defined functions are the functions defined by the programmer for either simplifying the code or hiding the code. A function is defined by using the df keyword, which will be dealt with thoroughly in our future videos. Next up, we'll dive into the last segment of this video, where we'll explore the fundamental operators commonly used in Python. Like any other programming language, Python utilizes basic mathematical operators like plus, minus, asterisk, and a forward slash, which stands for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, respectively. Besides them, there are many other operators, some of which are exclusive only to Python, the percentage sign or the modulus operator. It is used to return the remainder obtained after dividing the two numbers. For example, 5 modulus 2 will give you 1, which is the remainder of the division of 5 by 2 the power or exponent operator, denoted by the double asterisk sign. When this operator is utilized, it computes the result of raising the left operand to the power of the right operand, yielding the resultant value. The floor division, denoted by the two forward slashes. When this operator is utilized, it divides the left operand by the right operand like normal division, computes the quotient, and returns the greatest integer that is less than or equal to the quotient. For example, if we compute the floor division of 7 by 2, we get 3, as 3 is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 3.5. The equality operator, denoted by the double equal to sign. It is used to compare the equality between its operands and return true if both operands are equal, else return false. The assignment operator, denoted by the single equal to sign. As the name suggests, it is used to assign values to variables. Here, it is important to note a common mistake often made by beginners. They use the assignment operator instead of the equality operator when comparing two values. Keep an eye out for this to avoid errors in your code. And that concludes our exploration of the fundamental theory behind Python programming. Today, we have covered essential concepts such as data types, operators, tokens, and functions. As you continue your Python journey, Remember that building a strong foundation in these core concepts will serve as a solid framework for your programming endeavors. In the upcoming video, we will bridge the gap between theory and practice by translating these foundational concepts into tangible Python code. We will embark on a journey of hands-on learning, starting with simple yet instructive programs that will help solidify our understanding of Python's capabilities. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials like this one. Click on the video shown here to proceed to the next part of the tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.